doctors see patients and medical doctors and psychiatrists have to be medical doctors, see patients and push their misery into a diagnostic category. And every year, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual expands its categories so that all forms of human misery have a diagnosis, which should be, of course, addressed by a drug. And what has happened is terrible damage. The diagnoses that the doctors give are plugged in to the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, highly financed by the drug companies. The psychiatrists, who are actually psychopharmacists, plug people's misery into a diagnosis, a disorder, and then prescribe drugs on the basis of that disorder. So almost all of human misery is not accepted as something from which you might learn or to which you could address yourself in the way you live your life, but is a brain disease. Whoa. Now, what about these psychiatrists? Well, the first place, they get more prestige by calling the pain of life a disease, because then they're like real doctors addressing diseases. And that's particularly bizarre because there's no proof at all that these are diseases and that those diseases could be addressed with pills. In fact, in 75% of the cases of a mass study done by Whitaker in the British public health system found that the basic psychic drugs were no more effective in patients than a sugar pill. Insurance will only compensate a patient who has a, a diagnosis from the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, which plugs human misery into a disease model. And every year, those disease models expand. Now, some can be contracted. They used to think of homosexuality as a disorder and brain disease. They don't anymore because the political movement of gays and lesbians have made that impossible culturally. And these diagnostics are culturally formed. You know, there, there's a um, text from a meeting of the psychiatrists who decide what's a disorder. I think there's about 10 of them who sit down, they're all prestigious. And someone brought up a particular disorder and said, this should be included. And one of the psychiatrists said, no, it shouldn't, I have that. So they crossed it off. That's how scientific this process is. At any rate, insurance companies require reports. I don't take insurance because they ask for a lot of personal information. They also ask practitioners to justify why they're not medicating their patients, which is, I think, bizarre. It's really a hoax. And as a practitioner who's been in practice for 47 years, I have helped numerous people out of miserable situations and out of the human misery in which they found themselves, usually for good reason. And I totally reject the disease model, the medicalized model that gives psychiatrists prestige and lies that there's brain diseases that we don't have.